So good evening uh, and thanks to beer. Just a uh, few words to introduce the guest stars of this evening and uh, Paola Navone and uh, Cristina Morozzi. I think that uh, both of them, they don't need any presentation. First of all, they are really very good friends and second, I think that uh, uh, they work in a very hard way, doing their job in a very, very professional way. And I think that uh, you will see a lot of incredible creation and uh, interiors done by Paola. And uh, I think that uh, on one side, for sure, you will see that there is a, she is really professional. On the other side, I think that uh, really there is a lot of passion on what she is doing. Because uh, on one side, okay, she is doing products, interiors, and so and so, but I think that mainly she is making people dreaming, and I think that in our job is the most important thing. You know, Christina, again, uh, she was already here and uh, doesn't need any uh, presentation, and uh, I think that the interesting thing of uh, Christina is that uh, you can speak with her about everything, because uh, she's always... Uh, it's like Christina is six eyes, not only two. <laughs> She's always looking around on what is going on. And this is really very, very important. Because again, I think that on one side, in our job, it's very important to try to make uh, people dreaming. On the other side, like Christina, it's very important to be very curious, to understand what is going on and to understand what is next. I am here just to disturb, Paola. Yes. Paola asked me to disturb, so I start immediately to disturb Paola <laughs> and uh, asking uh, her why uh, she selected the title ephemeral, ephemeric. Because uh, usually when we speak about design, we say it has to be long life, uh, has to be completely the opposite. So ephemeric is, in my opinion, is a very incredible choice. Naughty. Uh, no, naughty, no, no, <laughs> beautiful choice. Maybe someone can suppose naughty, but it's a beautiful choice and very interesting because uh, ephemeric is uh, uh, very important for uh, uh, fair, for shop window, for exhibition, for, for a lot of job. And uh, if there is someone able in ephemeric, I'm sure he will find a good job in the future. I'm sure. Because I know that more and more is necessary. Shop window, uh, exhibition, uh, eph ephemeric location, and kind like this. And there's a job with few people involved. So it's uh, an opportunity, a very opportunity. So um, what Paola is going to show on my opinion, it's very important to see how, uh, let me say, with nothing, you can create a surprise, uh, maybe <coughs> shock, maybe uh, beauty also. What with she says. very humble, with, with very humble object. This is important because it's not necessary to have uh, luxury a lot. Also with humble everyday object. This is important. Okay. Well, uh, Marangoni invited uh, Giulio Capellini asked me to come here to show part of my work. Um, you know, my office is divided into sections. One does product design, and uh, one other section does interior design. The most beautiful project we did, uh, we do, is one that two group of people can work together and uh, this happened in a very, very, very uh, strong way with a lot of energy going around when we do a project that, uh, that are going to last for four days, one week. So we are going to show to you now uh, some of those projects starting on, on uh, 2000. We have a few of them. Uh, 2000 Architekturen Wohnen. Uh, nominate as designer of the year. They asked me to, they gave me a budget, they asked me to do design a, an exhibition, uh, to design, to show all my product design for all my clients. And I was very disturbed because, uh, you know, my product, everybody can see in the fair. I told them, just give them, tell them to go around and in the different booths they see my product. How can I, there is no reason to use my very precious budget 
to put this uh, uh, item that everybody knows, they are everywhere, in a, you know, I don't know, in a stand or in a platform, whatever. So they were, the, the editor-in-chief was very stubborn, like every German. <laughs> she insists. And then finally I said, okay, uh, if you really want me to show this, uh, my product, I have to do something special. So I will create a vision, my own vision, of a normal product, that every normal product become a piece unique, one-off, and I will look all this product uh, with my uh, blue, uh, blue glass. So you see now what happened. Please. This was the, at the entrance. You normally say thank you in a very small panel on the corner. Uh, thank to the to the everybody who gave you something free. So here was my thank you uh, panels, uh, very big, and all this was like neon. <laughs> Capellini <Well>, uh, is <laughs> there. Da, 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 da. All the, all <laughs> yes. These are all the. Yeah, we the same. And that the was the start one, of the. <laughs> That was the start of the exhibition. Now, we took advantage of the location with this look, very big, uh, uh, big, beautiful, um, big column. The old on the column the, become... On the docks, uh, on the yeah, docks. on the docks. Uh, this was curled in the docks on the river. So we make all this blue column become, all the column become blue, and all around we show the problem. This well, was all, a it was a carpet made by Dria, the collection, I designed collection of um, dinnerware for Dria, the, and I designed this carpet. It was a floating carpet of porcelain. In the middle of the Dria, the porcelain, there was some uh, See, like Chinese it. plate with a fish, and the fish was uh, around, and people don't really understand. What is Driade? What is Chinese? Well, this I bought a long time in the market in China. This I designed for Driade. So everything was floating around in this blue with the same uh, importance. Again, uh, going around, there was this forest of cactus, and inside uh, two armchairs uh, in blue textile. The, all the textile of the exhibition. There was a bed, a sofa, da, da. everything was blue. And this textile was a collection of uh, African textile that I collect very fast. And I cover everything with this blue textile. So the, the normal armchair become a very, how do you say it? unique in English? Piece. One off. One off. One off. Uh, I would like to ask you something. I was intrigued by this uh, cactus. And you have to tell the story. Where did you find? And I who? I who? have a friend. I have a friend, very nice lady, uh, with a daughter, crazy daughter, living. Crazy uh, daughter. Crazy yeah. daughter living in London under a bridge, whatever. I don't know. So this girl. <laughs> no, no, my it's true. No, it's, it's, true. Not, it's not a joke. It's true. I know very well it's, the daughter. It's true. You have crazy friends. It's true. So we I have convinced this girl to do something for me because she was doing very nice things with a, with with her hand. I said, "Well, you don't make a forest of cactus, so I can put some green uh, plant around my uh, stupid armchair." So she she start, <laughs> and she likes so much. This uh, chicken wire. Chicken and wire. And she did all this beautiful. This is really chicken wire. Is the, then there was a little bit too transparent, so we spray with this fluor green. And uh, the, the, the situation was magic. And now this girl is an artist. She's it's living famous. With it's famous. Mm. It's famous. The name is Benedetta Morio Baldini. And this year was involved by Magis. To yeah. make some clouds, yes, in uh, with the chicken wired, and these clouds are in the collection, and uh, in the 2000 was at the beginning. No one knows so her. I think it's also, so this it's is very incredible important. to discover. To discover, uh, it's very important to be curious. Mm -hmm. ecco, uh, this is. I am a monster is. of curiosity. I find my best things uh, in the garbage of uh, everywhere, everybody. So. Uh, 
I think for designer it's very important to be curious. Uh, all these journalists ask where you find their inspiration. I don't know. I mean, everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you cannot say Friday at 3 o'clock I will get expired. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up in the morning, I start to brief, and I'm very curious. <laughs> this is nice. I get it. And here was very funny because they asked me to uh, show in this exhibition all my product and my inspiration. So I said, well, this is my inspiration. This is a piece of everything from my house. Uh, the, the background is um, piccolo punto, come si dice? Is a tapestry. Uh, embroidery, the embroidery. Oh, I don't know in name. See, I don't know the name of this embroidery, but which is the name of Piccolo Punto? Piccolo Punto is tapestry, tapestry, like tapestry, uh, yes. And this is the Chinese uh, Great Wall. Yeah. Uh, was done, a lot of this was used to done when Mao Zedong was alive, because they, they don't have a pic, uh, money to take the picture. The picture was very expensive. It was less expensive to do embroidery. So this I collect in my Chinese style. Then this is some Buddha head uh, made in uh, gesso, gyps, gyps. This is uh, Clay, mm, Santa Redegonda mm, ceramic from south of France. This is a glass, pressed glass from America. This is a, a Santo Nino from an old uh, statue from the Philippines. This is a friend of mine who paint. Uh, this is a enamel uh, piece of lettering in my house. This is a uh, epiphetage, what is the name of this? In the roof of France. Ah, in, uh, this is an American, uh, Indian mask. Uh, this is a Chinese thing. This, ah, this is fantastic. This is a but lizard. It's beautiful. It's a lizard with a, this is metal thing that they used to scrape the coconut to make coconut ah. milk. So that's my, oh no, this is very beautiful. This is a label, but it's big like that. It's a label, um, Jacquard label, they used to put inside the coat during the um, Mao Zedong time. Period. For the very rich uh, politician, they have this inside the coat. Like a photo de Mao, see, yeah. <laughs> the real Okay, Mao that coat. was a, an example of how to show my uh, product design. Cappellini, any comment? Mm. <laughs> See, no, what do you think yeah. about this? The most important thing is, uh, as Paola told, that uh, you can find inspiration from everything and everywhere in the world. And I think that more and more this sort of uh, <coughs> cultural contamination is really very, very interesting and very important. I think that there is no more the monocultural and consumer. No? Now people more and more they like to mix different products, produce in different periods, in different uh, uh, countries, designed by different people. And so this is, uh, I think, the new trends, the real freedom of the end consumer, the freedom to be ourselves. Uh, well, yeah. yes. Here you are, a few years that you have the freedom to the be freedom. <laughs> See, but also, also the secret is uh, uh, to look, uh, to find beauty in uh, very everyday life uh, yeah, items. beauty of simplicity. Yeah. Oh, beauty of simplicity is uh, not necessarily to go in incredible space somewhere. Cioè, everyday life has uh, some beauty. Uh, some beauty. And you, have, you, have, you need to, uh, to learn to look at because we are disturbed by such a lot of uh, noise mm. and uh, we lost the capacity to look in at the small the things. Small silent, because this is silent things. Every day items are silent. It's not a piece of art, it's not incredible. It's not silent oh. things, but very beautiful and all together is incredible. And Paula shows how all this humble, everyday life items all together can make uh, uh, extraordinary uh, beauty. Perfilo per ah, segno. this is. Perfilo per segno. Oh, the, the was, was a 100 is anniversa anniversary of the si. 100 year of the e, e uh, universal exposition uh, in yeah, Torino. Exposition universal. Si. Uh, universal ex exhibition of uh, craft in Torino. In Torino. So they designed seven or eight uh, very interesting 
exhibition, Christina did one, and this exhibition about textile, nobody want to do, they gave it <laughs> <Paola>. to me. <laughs> there was a very difficult lady, nobody want to talk to, a very difficult space, so they, they called me, and I felt in the trap. They told me that, the, oh, it's very fantastic, this place, nobody, this space was in the, uh, Torino as a beautiful Baroque uh, building. And this, well, is, look, look, this uh, is in the uh, Baroque uh, building, but there is one section which is just done in the 1800, much less interesting, and that was there. <laughs> and this, this crazy room was the room where the Savoia family decided to give as a gift this room for the new Italian parliament. But ah. the Italian parliament that the Savoia was giving this room for never be in Torino. So they decide, they start to work, and in the meantime, every time we talk, 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 the parliament went to Florence for three days, and then they went to Rome. So this crazy room, which is relatively small, but incredibly high, was under, uh, under uh, moving the management, what is the si. management in uh, trasloco? In English. The yeah, the was, movers uh, was, 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 move, was under the venagement since uh, what, more than 100 years. And they say, everybody was so proud, they say, ah, was never given to anybody for an exhibition, this is the first time. Of course, it was a cadeau <laughs> and <You are>, It <laughs> you was so difficult, so <laughs> difficult that uh, you cannot do anything in this place. So anyway, I swallowed the cake and I decide what can I do, I do, I do another déménagement, another move, move, movement, move, move, moving around. Movement. And I designed, but the proportion of the room was such <laughs> that I designed this uh, armoire Big. and this box, this armoire was six meter high and inside was uh, four by six, was a room like uh, up to the uh, half of this room. So, Huge, huge, huge. And the material to be shown was 20 young designer, fashion designer, not very brilliant. <laughs> not all, let's say, not, not one, not and all the young of them. Designer were inside. Not all of them very brilliant. <laughs> so I was very scared what I'm going to do. You know, when you have something not perfect, uh, it's also difficult to. And then there was this beautiful collection of Capucci who did this uh, fantastic uh, sculpture for Biennale di Venezia. And he was mad because he was very, very, very hysterical because he doesn't want to be in relationship with these students. other young design. So I was, okay, the space is crazy. The proportion are untouchable. The, man, the Capucci doesn't want to be with the other. The other one worse than the other one. So I really, I really... Was a nightmare, a, with, Kind of a nightmare. <laughs> so I designed all these big box, like this one, mm -hmm. and all these big, 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 big uh, armoire. And I, I decide to put each designer in one armoire. So I try to show in the best possible way the work of everybody. They look so like they, in, a, there, like there in was, a theater. Like in yeah, a theater. there was no relationship between one designer and the other. So I put all the energy in each one, and I make for each one a very as much as possible the very nice. Uh, you open show. the door, and, and then you in have the a middle. Sort of, uh, oh, oh, turn in the door. Uh, in the middle of this uh, crazy mm. move, move Capucci. Around, there was this empty space. And I put this box under this one. There was a very small, very, how uh, do a turning plate that was moving very, 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 very slow, slowly. Uh, very slowly. So it was like a strange uh, magic thing because so what, uh, you, you were to? walking there. You cannot see any other textile around. You can all see, only see this. Uh, big, fantastic piece of uh, art. But when you move, you see this in another perspective. 
but you don't feel they are moving, but they were moving very, very, very slow. So finally, Capucci was very happy, and all the designer too. So very, much <laughs> very beautiful. Look, look, it's fantastic. So see, for example, this is one designer is in his own uh, box. Oh, Each one has his own box. Uh, that one is. A, this was a guy designing. Uh, he designed a raincoat uh, uh, things uh, for the rain. Uh, uh, here, uh, here is. So I, I make a little. Uh, indietro. So that was the steps. And you go inside, and inside there was a storm with a lot of water coming down. And that was full of water, full of water. The water was coming down. And also he has a shoes for uh, rain. So I put this leg, <laughs> sausage leg inside. And the water was coming down. That was little, were little um, stone. So the, at the end, his own environment was very nice. Well, Auntie, that was another well, look, one. Look. See, the, this well, is another one. This coat, this coat is done with the calze. Socks. 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 This was paper. Well, you know, this is, this is very was beautiful. With light inside. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the exhibition was very successful. Very successful because it uh, is a sort of storytelling. You open the, the cupboard and you have a, every time a surprise inside. And it's a sort of uh, little theater. Each one was his own theater. Yes. His own theater because it's like in a, on stage. Mm. <coughs> that and everybody <coughs> remembered this. Now, this is an No, questo è Pitti, ritratti d'autore. OK, this is in Florence. Mm. Uh, and uh, the, is in Florence during uh, an exhibition for uh, Cosera Pitti questo? Casa. Pitti Casa for Now the doesn't home. exist anymore. Mm -hmm. But once uh, uh, Pitti organized also an exhibition uh, once a year of uh, uh, for like the Machef. house, uh, like much but, but very more, more involved in text, more on the side of textile for the it means mm. uh, sponge and kind mm. like this. So I I scout around Italy uh, looking for craftsmen. Mm. And I collect all this craft work, and I design a, an apartment. And the walls of this apartment were this uh, rusty, rusty metal. Um, big wall like that, rusty metal. So the, the, the perspective was interesting. So you walk, used to walk here. That is the kitchen. This is a dining room. Why well, aren't you pop? So that is the dining room. And these are coming from a, a place in Italy called come si chiama? Bassano del Rappa. Rappa sì. Ceramic. Uh, and now you know this. I cannot see Specialized here, we in are, this uh, is ceramics. <laughs> this is glass from Venice. That, uh, Silver from um, Brandi Marte from uh, Florence. Flo ecco, Florence, Brandi Marte. This is glass. All these are glass. These are little animals done in Venice. The silver is from Florence, and the glass is from different places. Bye. This is the kitchen. Kitchen is done. These are text uh, tiles from a very old uh, uh, Florence manufacturer. This is from Puglia. Mm. And all these vegetables are done in marble. Uh, that's fish. All this, uh, all this glass, little fish in glass. All this from, from Venice. This is a very everyday thing. It's from Puglia. Mm. And uh, all, the, all this is marble. Uh, the water was coming down and going out and coming back. And these are from Pecchioli. Pecchioli is an old uh, factory, very, very beautiful in Florence, doing tiles by hand. Mm -mm. This is the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I'm with the, the fish, the red are, fish. The tiles are, again, from, uh, from uh, Pecchioli tiles from mm -hmm. Florence. The fish is a guy in uh, Liguria who designed this fish for me. 
And this is a crazy... Um, Who is this? Clesidra. How do you say Clesidra? It's like a, it's like a uh, watch. It's to like a sand, like a sand uh, clock. Like See, a clock, just clock. to measure, to measure yeah, the, the time. It's a sand clock, but it's a water <laughs> clock. Ah, this is a water clock. The crazy clock. designer decide that the time was something absolutely not possible to classify in the same way. It's also, there can be, the, you can put a fantasy also in this uh, uh, kind of object. So he designed all this clesidra, sand watch, but it's with water. So the water was coming down, bleak, 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 and after that was one hour or two hours, I don't uh, remember. Listen, Paola, let Oops. us know how you manage to discover, because <laughs> it's incredible, and uh, maybe it's a secret, uh, but uh, you can tell something, how you manage to discover such incredible uh, artifacts, uh, uh, people all over the Italy, because it's not so easy to find. Uh, there is uh, maybe you have a lot of culture about, but it's not so easy to discover such incredible object uh, traditionally done because this is not uh, this is tradition because Pecchioli is a tradition. Yes, but uh, many 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 things I know because I like so much that I always si, si, look but it's, it's interesting Other to... things I when I have a project like that I study a little bit more. Maybe. I talk to so. the people who that I already know. So, so what, so uh, no. <laughs> what we can say that uh, to study is very important. Study tradition, study local tradition, go around uh, and try to discover which are the local tradition uh, manufacturers. Uh, this is what Paola do every time and every whale all over the world. And this is very important because, in my opinion, still now there are such a lot of See, secret I do all the time, not hidden only when everywhere. I have a secret yeah. that no one see, but uh, you can discover hidden everywhere. And uh, maybe Italy is so rich in ceramics. Yes. You go in the south of Italy, uh, yeah. and you ceramic find ceramic is one of my favorite. It's items. incredible. It's yeah. incredible. Okay, Vietri, for example. Uh, there are the, some places uh, in Italy specialized with such uh, masterpieces. Yes, you but can they find. are closing down one after See, the other. See, I lo so, because problem. no one take care, no one take yeah. care about, uh, they don't care. And you find masterpieces. Mm. Okay, now this one, always in Florence, is in the Stazione Leopolda, is a beautiful building that is uh, now there, uh, is used for exhibition. The theme was, uh, when you design an, a commercial exhibition, normally you cut the space with a piece of wood like that, and Capellini rent one, you rent one, but it's so ugly that inside you have to spend other money to arrange your own uh, area. So we make an experiment with the Pitti Imagine company people. Uh, can we design an environment, a commercial environment that is, has some kind of aesthetic value? So uh, if I am a small company, I come with my product, I don't need to build something else, but I find a kind of structure where I can show my things, my textile, my glassware, my ceramic. So uh, we try, or why? Okay, we designed the space <laughs> with a tape, this is Yellow a scotch tape. tape, industrial scotch tape, and we designed the vertical, the volume of each booth with this uh, uh, cord. And this one, every, uh, every little space has some kind of uh, structure that they can use. Uh, storage shelves or table or chair by maybe look so these people come and they put their own textile inside these other people come they put their own textile but this is very nice and no construction and, and not investment from their side 
and also a red thread that put all together. Yeah, there is a kind of aesthetic one, uh, value make on this. Each one yeah. is a sort of uh, melt, uh, great confusion. That if was very big. Eh? Uh, then we make a restaurant. Look. Uh, that was there, I didn't like, so I put all these yellow sticks inside. So all of a sudden, mm -hmm. become a beautiful uh, si, wall. Si. Uh, uh, uh. Finish. That was ah. how to design a fair. Ah, this is beautiful. Okay. This is about, um, about one of the most important Italian porcelain manufacturers. The whole story is <coughs> you can uh, show, um, make a portrait of a company in a different way. Um, my way look very, sometimes very superficial, but at the end of the story is not. Uh, these people asked me to make an exhibition about Richard Ginori. You know, all of you know that during Salone del Mobile, people come to Milano, they have only a few days. They go to this fair, they take the metro, they see 1,000 tables, 1,000 chairs, 1,000 armoires, 1,000... They come home after uh, staying in the metro again, they are dead. How can you ask them to go to see an exhibition and where you have to read all this uh, note on the wall and blah, 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 historical story. So I say, okay. Um, I don't, feel, I don't feel good idea to make another, an exhibition during Salone. And I told the company, I think the best things you can do for the audience of this particular audience on the, during Salone is to make a lounge, a space, nice, where people can come, stay one minute, one hour, two hours, they can mm -hmm. sit down in something soft, they can eat something good, and they go home. So you, they will remember you better than designing a real exhibi historical exhibition, very boring. So, so. Now, of course, the team was show the people the uh, Richard Ginori company. So I made a trip in the, in the factory with a very nice photographer, and we took beautiful um, picture. picture, and we didn't make this installation, lounge and restaurant, using the element of the factory. So we use the element as a decoration, as a, as a wall, as a divider, but with the idea to build a lounge, with the idea to build a restaurant. And then you go through, you walk, and you see porcelain, porcelain, porcelain everywhere. So we design uh, <laughs> outside. Outside is very big uh, because the street number people don't see you. So we put this big, big, big um, knife and fork, and then this was the entrance. This is via Via Savona, Milano. So the entrance was already saying Richard Ginori taste lounge, lounge. and uh, already the ceiling was porcelain, one thousand, two thousand. Uh, uh, cup. Everything with a, with a, everything with an handle was hung there. Then we Look, that the lounge was the restaurant. Beautiful. This was a piece of wood. That was the food, and all the uh, uh, and all this uh, element of decoration. This was is a picture. Was done. Was coming from the factory. So this is a picture of the factory. And this is a real palette from the pack. Very industrial, very industrial pieces. And then uh, this wall was 9,000 dishes plate that um, we designed 1,170 design in Florence for this uh, for a fair, one fair, food fair. And every uh, producer of salami, mortadella has one plate. And then, we use it again in Milano. So this guy was doing, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, anchovies. This guy was doing, uh, at the back there was the name of the pasta. What a macaroni, see. Name of these people, all beer, this was doing beer. 
that was doing, I don't see anything because I Incredible. don't know. Incredible. Anyway, we put this. This wall was done with 9,000 of this plate. Then I went in the factory, and there was this baroque uh, bourgeois. So I told them, OK, give me one bourgeois or one sculpture for each table, because these tables were big, little bit uh, poor. So they gave me this. They, all these things came in a box. With a, and um, the CEO of the company told me, you just try to be a little bit careful, because these are very expensive. <laughs> and historical, they is, see, historical pieces How are very much expensive. Is this? this is, was 48,000 euros. I, I was completely paralyzed. I told him, Mama, you are crazy. Why you gave me something? So now, uh, my table was empty. The porcelain was already there. Uh, I don't want to give it back, but I was very scared. So I put this chicken wire, see? Yes, yeah. <laughs> just to protect, just to protect the pieces. I put this big chicken wire, that, and uh, all over the world, all the magazine, they took this picture and they said, oh, what a fantastic idea. But sometime idea come when you are desperate. <laughs> so you know, you are in the swimming pool. You don't know how to swim. The water is very cold. And all of a sudden, you jump out. You say. <laughs> and that is the story. Well, this is well, another part What of I the can say is that uh, this installation was considered the best of the edition of Furniture Fair was really incredible. I got the chance to see, and every people said, go, uh, was a sort of tam-tam, uh, go in Via Savona to see uh, the installation of Richard Ginori. And uh, Richard Ginori is very uh, ancient uh, manufacturer in Doccia, near all, all Florence. This was from the factory. All see, near factory. Florence, and was one of the best known of Italy with pieces also done by Joponti and kind like this. The biggest success was that here there was 160 square room, uh, square meter of beautiful, very soft sofa. And two, 200 magazine. Every moment of the day. Full of people like We this. go, people were there calling the friend, uh, resting a little bit, drinking a glass of water. No, that was very nice. Paula, we have to do again something like this yeah. next fair because uh, we feel uh, the yeah we need well, something. We no, don't, oh, don't no, talk no, about no, please, this. Uh, no, please. No, no. Okay, let's go one next more. expo. Yes, just to rest See, a little bit. But this was very funny because we, this was picture. This is a real. This, this is, is a it. picture. This is a real item that I took from the factory. C'è la, la painting Guarda, station. Look. This is a painting station. This how, is ah, how they the paint. Pieces. And the this dishes. is the chair that I took from the factory. Normally, there is a man or lady painting there. With that is the lamp. These are all the brush. So it's a lounge, but it's also the story uh, of the makers. How, yes, how, but how it's easy to capture, you yeah. capture at your own level. The child was so curious. The journalist was looking in a little bit another level. The, you know, everybody like. Per grandi piccini, we say. Yes. <laughs> look, look how beautiful it is. <laughs> All this Listen, came from for the you, involved in ceramic is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is they, a carpet. They, look. This the variety, is a, the this variety. This is a carpet. This is a collection that we put flat, so we see from the top. It was a carpet of uh, uh, Vecchio Ginori. Vecchio Ginori. This is very classical. Uh, when you Finito. when you are married, uh, everyone gave you this one. This is classical. Vecchio Ginori yeah. is. Uh, Okay. Ah, this, Bill. this is another story about the company. Glass and ceramic are my favorite material. <coughs> this uh, uh, factory asked me to, again, to do an exhibition during Salone about this glass. Uh, I went to visit the factory. I went to visit the museum of the factory. And 
the most interesting, at the end of the story, I told this gentleman, listen, the most interesting things I see in your factory are two. This one, your uh, family tree. Because they were, the Barovier family owned this factory since 1,700 si. uh, something years. It's a Venetian family. Can you very imagine? It's absolutely hysterical, this. A second, they, they have a museum, their own museum, but the museum in Murano is beautiful. And in the museum, there are the same things that you also the Barovier Museum has. The only difference was a little man <laughs> in Côte de Venise with gold powder. And I told the man, Here. I like these two things. The bambi, this lamp with the shape of baby with gold and everything, and your family tree. So, when I did have to design the, the exhibition, I decided to make my own baby. It's like a marino, we call marino the sailor. So I made this little sailor blue, uh, and I made the uh, description of the family tree in the entrance. The old uh, exhibition is, let's give us the possibility to somehow to having a relationship with this beautiful glass. Chandelier. Normally we see this very far away, up in the ceiling. So I brought everything down and I put a very nice chair. So you sit here, you can talk to the chandelier. <laughs> How are you? Ba, ba, ba. So, and they all, and this is so rich, so fantastic, so beautiful that I only use very rough wood and iron that is very rusty. Just to underline the pressure. So this is a slice of, uh, of wood, and this is a blue uh, paste of uh, glass. But the, the, the rusty wall underlined the pressures of the glass. So it's very, it's very beautiful because you have this. This uh, was a, is a detail of a very nice room. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Look. Uh, that was a room uh, of, the, of the witch. Yes. Uh, these are pieces of lamp that I took. Uh, and inside, in the dark, there were the, uh, these uh, Turkish blue eyes. 450 of these blue eyes, but you don't see immediately when you come. You come, you sit, and then in this dark, you, you have uh, 400 eyes that look at you like this. That was really fantastic, a uh, little bit of magic uh, situation. Okay, this was a garden, good. was a garden and uh, we put a piece of uh, chandelier inside like this and we put the light and uh, this was the grass of this garden and then you can sit there and you look up and then you have this uh, crazy blue feather uh, like a sky. This is a this is a detail of that grass. Oh, that's yes. another uh, room. You walk this way, you only see the uh, blue uh, wall, the blue uh, legno wood, wood, and you walk the other side. Paula, why you selected the blue? Uh, and you see, ah, good question. You know, uh, it's because, a good question. Um, why you selected the blue? My favorite color. Ah, okay. I like all the. No, colors. no, it's. Uh... It's very important. Blue is very important for me. I don't know anything about this uh, medicine alternative, but blue. I think the color are very. Therapeutic. They, they have a very strong effect on you. Um, <coughs> Intellectually, I can use any color when I have to design or work on something. But personally, if I have to bring something next to my body or inside my house, it's blue. cannot be earthy color, cannot be on the brown, rusty mm -hmm. side. It has to be watercolor, transparent, the, water of the, the color of the sky, the of the water, skies, of the sea. Okay. All this, uh, don't ask me why. It's interesting to discover, but I don't have an answer to that, so. No, but uh, no, I ask you because I wonder if you select the blue because you discover in the factory a lot of items in blue, but or glass, this the, is the, the glass, no, blue, the blue, blue glass is your, is no, beautiful. blue, yes, but blue is your favorite, it's not it's quite, my favorite, echo, but this it's is. also a color 
very in, the, in the glass is very special. See, because allora, the, the deep color in glass is very difficult to realize. They are more expensive and it's mm. very, see, no? See, sono si, rosso è più. Rosso, and the rosso is the more expensive, mm. but then also the... The, the blue is beautiful. The, the cobalt, blue, all this cobalt, cobalt, cobalt things cobalt. Is But it's more difficult to realize in cobalt than in pale pink or pale green. Yeah. The, the strong color yeah, are but more in, difficult. In Murano, they in do Murano. beautiful, beautiful blue. blue. Look at the beautiful blue. So I make a, like in a hotel, this is a library, and mm. it's a library of lamp. So all these are blue lamp. Mm. And this is rust. Ah, that. Ah, questo vedi, this is the, was the end of the, end of the, there was Mar one of these marino at the entrance to receive you, and at the end, a line of a marino to say bye-bye. <laughs> and this piece are, <laughs> Uh, in the garbage, uh, literally in the garbage of the factory, I find these which are mold, wooden mold that are rejected I, because they are already overburned. So, but Marino is fantastic. Marino, Marino became the star. But star. You know, Marino became very famous. So. Star, the star of the salone, Marino. So two years after, like, like, Marino, again Marino, again Marino, Marino, Marino in back. the garden, come back. <laughs> and we did the project called Secret Garden. So you open the door and you have all oh, this Marino. Marino. <laughs> <laughs> like a Chinese soldier in the, um, in the garden. See? This is Orto Botanico in Milano. Yeah. Very, very and beautiful garden. Secret were, garden. We're protecting the... The, this uh, padier, this uh, chest, this uh, nest. nest, and uh, inside the nest, mm. each nest contains one um, historical Barovier, Look. Uh, Barovier, uh, this is a, Chandelier. this is a Carezzonico model, very big one. <coughs> now look, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so incredible. This, this uh, is very, uh, where if they ask you <laughs> where you are not supposed to put a chandelier is in the garden in the daytime. So they told me, oh, this, we select a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place, but how can you <laughs> show a chandelier there? So again, I invent this idea of the nest, yeah, look, nest. to have the dark, <coughs> to have the dark, uh, to hide this thing. So the, in all these big uh, uh, nests, you can only see through the little uh, piece of uh, buco. Hole, hole, look. <coughs> this one was seven meter high. Eh? This nest was seven meter high. Because uh, chandelier like that are very precious, uh, very expensive. You can imagine how much they cost. So mm. you have also to protect, uh, anyway. Oh, this Maybe is, this a, is a true. Was the was the hole, the hole through which you can see the chandelier inside. Look, this look. is all go, uh, powder of gold, and this is three uh, pasta di vetro. This is a, a blue, um, I don't know, so, milk, milk, uh, milk color. <laughs> si. Yeah. Uh, it's not blown. Uh, pasta di vetro is not blown. Hollandese, they call si. this Hollandese. Si. It's not blown. Uh, glass si, si. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Si, si. Glass base, si. Finito! No more. So, the, message, the message is we are looking for a beautiful exhibition for the next year. So this is the way I say learn to discover yeah. how many beauty we are surrounded sur surrounded by beauty especially in italy but everywhere museum uh, uh, manufacturer and uh, like this i want to know how does it work it first to go to the company and select the objects or you already have a plan in your mind before you go <coughs> to the factory and choose the ceramic for ah. I never did something regularly in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes I already have an idea, sometimes it's just a, a, 
an accident, sometime is a meeting. Uh, every project starts with a meeting. I meet a factory, I meet a guy doing a weaving under, uh, uh, there is no uh, rule, there is no rule. Uh, your particular love for the handicrafts, where does it come from? Did, were you born with it? Did it come at a certain point in your life? Uh, what? No, I'm very curious, and I, but it's true that uh, craft uh, is a big uh, part of my life. Mm. I really love always to discover or to see where somebody is doing something. And uh, I spend, uh, I spend uh, 20 years of my life in Southeast Asia, 50% of my time. So I, I was, you know, deeply in, inside this uh, uh, reality where um, a production unit maybe is done by thousands and thousands of people, produce a big quantity, industrial quantity, but everything is done almost by end. So there was this uh, exercise. I don't know, I always try to put together things that, that normally don't go together. So I go to the industry trying to convince them to put some accident in their life, or mm. I go to the craft saying, mm, you better become more efficient. I don't know, I'm a little bit a messy, messy pe person that I like to produce a little bit of a mess around. <laughs> I think there is a value. And also, I think um, wherever you have uh, the hand of the people doing, doing something or leaving a mark on something, uh, somehow this energy is there. And I like to take advantage of this. But uh, normally, uh, I realize that uh, people that do by hand uh, are very proud about. So if you uh, talk with them, See, people are proud. If you go in a factory, people are proud. Nobody, nobody it's not really a shame. It's not a shame how we consider. They are really proud. And this also, is sometime, uh, uh, what happened to these, sometime to these people in the other side, especially in the other side of the world, but also in Italy I discover, is they don't know what to do. So they, either they decide I am an artist and they do things that you cannot look at it because they are absolutely not, uh, not uh, yeah, of compatible to Same. our, um, lifestyle, to our image, to our value of uh, image value. Um, or they feel they're doing something that has no value. I work in India a long time. But you know, having beautiful things, first of all, you have to pay a little bit. You cannot imagine that somebody work by hand, so no money. So why? <laughs> so if you pay a little bit more than what other people pay, you can, in, first of all, this tradition doesn't die. Second, these people can do miracle, beautiful things that otherwise you will not, you are not able to do by, ourself, by, by yourself. So I think um, it's interesting and also, Maybe it's a point uh, for a school to, mm -hmm. to look. Mm -hmm. Why not? I, I so much appreciate your approach because I think uh, uh, in other countries there are very strong craft lobbies now nowadays. Uh, uh, lobbies that are in, engaged in re-evaluating the craft sectors, but they are separated from arts and from industry. And I think what makes Italy so special is that the crafts are still integrated somehow, and I think that's what we have to work for and towards, that the craft sectors are still integrated in industry and reproduction right, between art and industry. And I think that is what, uh, why your work is so special, because I think we need to really protect, protect this part, to, to, because in Italy it is uh, it is different than in, other, in, in, in other countries where the crafts are absolutely a separate 
factor to industry mm. and art. What else I see in Italy, there are still quite a, still a very fine link between. Uh, yes. But we have to be careful yes. not to yes. cut. No, no, se, not to cut, no, to, 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 to preserve, to see. Yeah. I appreciate your work because mm. I think it's, uh, it's extremely important to, to preserve that. Because I think that this is uh, just a very important issue that normally in design and education, when we think about made in Italy, we think yeah. about designers and we think about, uh, about uh, <laughs> industries. But I think now that not Designers or no industry they can survive without the help of artisans, these fantastic mm. artisans. No? I was uh, <coughs> very happy to read this morning on the Corriere della Sera that the, the Valentino Couture uh, uh, show in Paris was uh, very successful and there, they doubled just the number of people working on the Couture. This is a huge success, I think, no? uh -huh. on one side. On the other side, yes, it's absolutely. Very, very yeah. On the other side, in a way, you know, it's absolutely true that we have in Italy fantastic artisans, and some of them I visit with Paul in South Italy, that they are closing, because again, mm, nice. you know, they, they don't know in which direction to go. They don't have, they are enough strong just to make exhibition, to export, and so and so. And I think that really we need absolutely when we think about this made in Italy, when we think in, uh, to Italian products, and not in Italy, if it's in fish, or if it's in no, food, this... if it's in design, but we have absolutely to defend, because this is a very, very important part of our history, of our yeah. culture. No? That's why I think that uh, really one of the dreams is to try really to organ to put all these people together, and sometimes it's uh, some of them together, and sometimes it's very, very difficult. No? Because these are also strange people. And they see, for example, in Brianza, in the area, in the area where I live, where I, no, where I work, not where I live. You know, the problem is that really, you see, when they, these people, uh, um, they became 70s, 80s, there are not young people continuing their job. Because also, these artisans, they were, so they were not thinking that artisan, it means that they, they produce art, no? They were thinking that, okay, no, my son or my daughter I cannot follow me. Yes, to study, to or be a doctor, to oh, be an engineer. Architect. And so, no? We have plenty of architects, nobody knows how to do a chair. I was last week with, uh, with Morrison in, uh, in this fantastic laboratory of this man that is doing this, working uh, really wood like uh, jewelry. This man is 81 years old. 81. 81. He has two workers there around 75. <laughs> His son is an engineer because he cannot be an architect. So, you know, when, uh, in one, two, three years, he's going to finish. No? And there are people waiting months to adjust the table, the cabinet, or a small object produced by So, this is a really big problem on one side. On the other side, I have to say that really, for example, when we think to Brianza, that was just really the, one of the most important uh, areas for uh, furniture product, wood production, furniture product, post production. We had in the past this uh, Scuola d'Arte in Cantù, where people, the, the young students, they start to uh, understand how to be very good artisans. Step by step, they turn the into school design. in a design school. I don't remember in the last 25 years a good designers that I'm came out from that school. <laughs> But on the other side, we have no more young artisans. This is no, but it's job. bad because it's bad because these young people dream about something that is uh, has no value. Why they have to become all this, doing the same things when they don't make uh, money out of what they know how to do? I just finished a big project in Thailand. I design a complete hotel, small hotel, but very big uh, uh, restaurant. And I did everything in Thailand because they have a big import tax. So I decide, I try as much as possible. At the end, I think we uh, did 90, 95% of the hotel is made in, all the material are made in Thailand, all the furniture are made in Thailand, all the dinner where I'm made in Thailand. There is a fantastic, Thailand has a very big speciality in uh, ceramic and weaving. So I have a ceramic from Thailand everywhere. 
from the very uh, sophisticated craft in the tableware to the most industrial tableware in Banco to the um, low-tech uh, tiles for the bathroom. And it was very interesting because in, beginning, in the beginning, the project manager was really like that, not happy. Was suspicious. Yeah, he want import and he want to copy because they don't have the money to import. So I start to take everything I like around Thailand. And I, little by little, I heard the, I learned the word tamada. Tamada means uh, ordinaire. Uh, 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 tamada, every day. She always say, ah, tamada, tamada, the worker and people. They were so shocked that with tamada things, you can make a beautiful hotel. Tamada. So. Now we have to use tamada. <laughs> Yeah, tamada. Instead of ordinary everyday tamada. <laughs> no, items, I tamada. I really think that this is very, very important because I think that also, and this is good, I think that it's very important also for our young students, no? And sometimes people, they think that uh, they can be someone if they design a table, a chair, or um, a sofa in their life. No, sometimes I think that uh, a very important thing is to try to take an idea for a designer and from that idea, from that dream, to arrive to a product. This is the product management in fashion, in design, so it's something it's very absolutely important. very, very important. Because, you know, you need to have a lot of sensibility to take just an idea from Paula and from this, uh, that idea to arrive to the problem. It's something that, frankly speaking, I have nothing against engineers, but frankly speaking, an engineer can do that. No, yeah. And sometimes I say this is something that really the company needs, because it's absolutely true that companies like uh, Ginori, they have really a huge and incredible heritage, and maybe they don't but know also, to but have that. But also people that are able to do painting, yes, that kind absolutely. of is incredible. And yeah, they, they, are, all they have no, not a lot of consciousness about uh, yeah, the, they don't know. the problem is uh, to increase the consciousness of the people and to find a way, commercial way, to promote uh, uh, done by hand. Uh, this is not easy and this is a problem. We have a richness and we have to learn how to improve, to export, tamada and, to, tamada, and, to, <laughs> and to teach to people uh, to appreciate what is well done and what is not serial. Because if you do by hand, each item is a little bit different from the other one. So this is, uh, each one is unique. And do I think that this is the biggest lesson that year? We have students coming from all over the world, and for sure they come in Milan to understand and to study design and so, and so but I think that just to try to understand what is Italy is not enough just to look to the beautiful shining design shows in the center of the city but it's really to go to the laboratories to see the small this workshop small or medium or big where you see that really really there is the history the passion and so you know a group of uh, uh, students, they already went to the Fania, Falenia Maria in Cassina and they, said, they saw how Mr. They were, they were impre impressed, yes, they were impressed Absolutely. because it's incredible. Is, I think this is the real experience. It's something that they can see here in Italy and they can bring back in their country. And this, uh, I think that is... But uh, if you good. consider uh, uh, richness of Italy, we have Murano for the glasses, but we have also Colle Valdelsa. Yeah, but Murano they, is disappearing. Well, it's disappearing, is. but we have uh, each re region has its own richness. Grottaglia in Puglia, Vietri. But also there is no school. There is no school. Murano doesn't have and school. no one knows, because if you say, allora, I told Vietri, ask to some people if they know or they have been there. Grottaglie have been there? You, because you collect, uh, you, but not uh, people usually know, they don't know. They don't know that everywhere in Italy there is some uh, skillness uh, special. No, Bassano del Grappa, listen, oh, li it's, it's incredible. So we know Murano maybe because it's famous because in Venice, but we don't know Colle Valdelsa, we don't know Grottaglia, we don't know Bassano del Grappa, Ceremity Bassano is famous. 
And I say that really the only way to look to the future is really looking back to our history. This is the oh, not only back. No, no, but yeah, only but the to present. Look, look what we <laughs> Yeah, sure. I, I look, look away and say, <laughs> back is fine, forward is also fine. No, because also I see that. No, yeah. we have to look forward without. Uh, uh, forget the past. Without this is no. so salami on your you know, No, sense salami. The real problem is that uh, beauty is beautiful. We, it is uh, really beautiful. No That's me, you know, also. Without the salami. Most without salami. <laughs> in front of a beautiful chandelier of Barbier is a star. It's also we take Claudio Silvestrini in front of it. You can say it's not beautiful, you know. Claudio Silvestrini? No. Yeah, you <laughs> cannot say that it's not beautiful because no. there are something we'll so We'll appreciate incredible. also this minimalist, yes. you can say. But uh, sure, sure. anyway, you know, that, that's it. So really, I think that Luca is the same thing that we told uh, with Cristina when we spoke about uh, the Milano Fair. Not just to look only to the product, but try to understand what there is on the back of the product. That's the most important thing. La last but not least, uh, I, because we talked a bit about ceramics, and uh, as you are here in Milan, and you are not probably uh, able to go to Bassano in Nove, uh, Bassano, or to Portale, okay. Okay. but you can also go in Via Senato. Ah, and you can look at the fantastic door, Openers of Lucio Fontana in Via Senato Undici 11. You see, can see all to... around Milan, you can see so many fantastic artisanal ceramic works on housing, on architecture, everywhere. So you just have to open your eyes. It's not only in uh, uh, specialized yes, sure, centers, but, but it's same. all around here as well. You just have to look around. Walk That's around. All what I want to say. So. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you so much. Here. Walk around, walk around, and Thank look you at. Thank you very much to Cappellini, to the school, everything to the students, and uh, take out your prosciutto from your eyes. This is my <laughs> take my out suggestion <laughs> for. <laughs> or or uh, buy a blue. Yes. Glass and glasses, or buy a blue studio. glasses. Yes. Or buy it. these blue glasses <laughs> just to, to look at. Like, like, like a studio. <laughs> like, <laughs> like this, <laughs> or buy a pair anyway, of blue glasses. Okay, this is the first step. Next time we want to see your hotels, your interior, okay. your designs. Fine. Waiting for you in September. Thanks a lot. Ciao.